Okay, okay. Jeez. Bob wants to say something. First of all, you're on a 13-hour plane ride, 15-hour plane ride, whatever it ends up as, and you're going up over the Arctic Circle, and you begin to think about, oh my God, it's cold. <laughs> and then you realize that there's got to be a reason that the pilot is, is f flying this way and over and down, probably to save time or certain vectors and this and that. And, and when you look out the window, the sun is still up. It's 2 o'clock in the morning, and you're flying at 600 miles an hour in this massive plane. And it's really kind of breathtaking. It's, it's, it's an awesome thing to think about going to that point and realizing that, wow, just below you is just in a massive amount of snow. It's just an awesome beautiful spectacle to see. 19th October, back home it's uh, 8.20 in the morning and uh, we've been flying about 12 hours. Uh, we're here, we're all tired, we've all got bad hair, we need a shower, but uh, we're going to, we went through customs here and then we're going to get back on the plane and then fly up to Beijing. And uh, right now it's uh, almost 8.30 in the evening and uh, by the time we get to the hotel and check in, it'll probably be about 11.30 uh, tonight and uh, bed will feel real nice. This was the view of Beijing outside our hotel window on our first morning in China. History tells us that Beijing was a frontier trading town for the warring Mongol nation. It had its beginning in 1215 AD under the direction of its greatest conqueror, Genghis Khan. Our view this morning, though beautiful, tells us the air is heavy with pollution. Oh well. How about some breakfast? You know, you got a long day in front of you, so you, you kind of better eat and, and make sure that you, you, you've got something there because you're going to do a lot of exercise. And then when you get down to breakfast, it kind of brings you to a taste of home. I mean, there's Rice Krispies, there's uh, Frosted Flakes, there's Corn Flakes, there's some good fruits, there's, there's, there's all kinds of beautiful food that they have, and, and plenty of it, I might add. And then on the other side of the table, there is the Chinese-style food, and you have noodles and, and rice and other adaptations of their style of breakfast. So it was very interesting to wake up in the morning and see two cultures and two worlds and this is the only time of the day that you saw that food wise because there's a slice of home that's there with french toast pancakes or whatever you wanted and then you have the, the, the culture of the land and it was fascinating on our first morning we realized that the itinerary we left at home for everyone to follow on our day-to-day -day adventure has been changed several times everyone in our group all had places they wanted to see so on average we were up at six and did return to our hotels until about nine each night this morning, we got our first glimpse of the driving conditions in a city of 12 million people. So far, it doesn't look so bad. Uh, Just wait. To move the visit to the forbidden uh, Tiananmen Square to this morning. So we were first to visit Tiananmen Square, then we will walk from the square to the forbidden city because they are closed. But even though it's closed, still it takes uh, some uh, 20 or more, 20 minutes from the square to the forbidden city to the entrance. So today is, for the whole day, it will be a day of walking on foot. And because uh, even in the summer palace, we still have to walk from this uh, to place to that place because uh, it's uh, actually a park or garden, not a palace. Itself. People's Republic of China was uh, founded and the square was expanded. And in 1976, when Lake Chen Mao died, 
his body was kept here. So this uh, square was further expanded. Now the total uh, area can hold uh, 500,000 people for rally. Actually, while I've seen her end about the show. What I'm, what I'm amazed at is if you, if you look at how much the coal dust has, I mean the haze, I mean it's just absolutely thick. Oh, yes, hello there. Not enough English there to let us know what it is. No, no. So we need to go all the way around the other side. Well, we go that way. Yes. The giant obelisk was completed in 1958. There are carvings of key revolutionary events on the monument. One relief shows the Chinese destroying opium in the 19th century. I would love to have visited these museums, but there are just so many hours in the day. Tiananmen Square, this is it. This is where it all happened. Um, if you remember in the video from the time of uh, the revolt, the tanks coming through the square and all that chaos, this is where it happened. And as we look off straight ahead, the entrance to the Forbidden City. Uh, and again, a thing I, I just uh, am totally amazed at is uh, the fog, the mist, the pollution, actually. It's all coal, coal dust. Uh, automobiles, but mostly coal dust. Most everyone uses coal to fire up their stoves and, and, and the fire for electricity. But we're going to make our way down to uh, the entrance to the Forbidden City as we're here at uh, Tiananmen. Look at that, that's a kite. If you look at, uh, if you look up at that kite, I mean, that's about as realistic as you can get. It's hard to imagine that that's, uh, that's not real. Wow. Letting it zoom away from him, taking it a great distance. And again, we're at Tiananmen Square. We cut down and watch the operator. He's uh, reels that in. Then lets it, lets it go and lets it soar. That thing back and forth. It's uh, 9.30 in the morning here, Monday morning here at Tiananmen Square. And uh, as we look around the square, we can see an awful lot of different groups, uh, an awful lot of tours as we were here today. And uh, again, <laughs> I keep saying it, we've all seen pictures of this place much clearer. But I guess this is as good as it gets. Today the temperature is going to be 77 degrees uh, with a slight breeze later on. So we were always worrying about uh, what was going to happen with temperature and so forth. But uh, it's working out real well. I can't get over this kite. <laughs> and there are several of them here. So we're going to head down towards the corner where we're going to pick up on our group. And then we're going to make our way into the Forbidden City. where the tank, photograph from up here where that guy was uh, stopping the tank. Roughly right about in here. Right in here, you say? Yeah, yeah. That's what yeah. it's right, on, right in the side because I believe they were photographed from the top of that building uh -huh. and the angle was down to the left and that's where he probably was right in through here. I got my souvenir at Tiananmen Square, and I keep thinking to myself. Is that is that the, that's, that is that that? Yeah. And carry, carry. Well, no, it's, it's a smaller one than that. Oh, that is that is unbelievable. In fact, you know, I was over on the other side and I saw those, and I thought, my God, hawks! Yeah. And then I kept watching <laughs> them and I went, same thing? No. Oh, wait, no, no, no. Those, those are kites. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm gonna try to get this thing home in one piece. I'll never fly it. You know, yeah. Hanging on the wall. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Bicycles going by on your left. 
daily commute uh, with the cyclists. Uh, we understand that uh, they pay about 300 to 700 Remy for RMBs for that, eight RMBs per dollar. And as I understand that uh, it takes them quite a bit to get to work and uh, they lock up their bicycles. Uh, I thought maybe they would uh, stand free, but uh, they're barely smiling at you, huh? Hey, even skid marks here. All right, we're heading down underneath the city, going to come up on the other side, going towards the Forbidden City. Take my sunglasses off. Not falling. Okay. All right, right out front, the Golden City. Big photograph of Chairman across the street from Tiananmen Square. The sun is warm today. It's starting to burn off some of the haze. Hopefully the wind will pick up and blow away so we can get some clear shots. I gotta get a shot of this for the planetarium. Let me get a little bit closer here. Little boy, isn't he adorable? Oh my goodness. One of the most pleasant discoveries of China was seeing how beautiful the young children are. As a parent myself, I'm always a pushover when I see little kids. Being strangers, we always ask the parents if we could photograph their child. And like proud parents everywhere, they were happy to oblige. Yes, in China, families are encouraged to have one child. There is a strong sense of family here, as you can see the pride they have in their little one. Something else you discover is that kids are kids all over the world. This little guy retrieved a drop ticket for one of our members. I suppose I should be showing you how many cameras were taking his picture. I guess I'm not the only softy in the group. Chairman Mao, the platform up top and all of the major political holidays here at Beijing, uh, a lot of the party leaders were all s standing up on there as the military would come down through the boulevard with the tanks and soldiers in years past. And uh, that's where they would stay, right up there on that particular platform. Tiananmen Gate was built in the 15th century and restored in the 17th. It has five doors and seven bridges. The center was used only by the emperor. To the left of the Chairman Mao's picture it reads, Long live the People's Republic of China, and on the right, Long live the unity of the peoples of the world. It was from the gate that Mao proclaimed the People's Republic on October 1st, 1949, and there have been few alterations since then. The Forbidden City was off limits for 500 years to all but the most privileged. It was built between 1406 and 1420 by Emperor Yung Li using almost one million laborers. The Forbidden City is the largest and best preserved cluster of ancient buildings in all of China. It is the home of two dynasties of emperors, the Ming and the Qing. A total of 24 emperors have lived there. Over the years, there were lots of fires, especially during the lantern festivals, and when the winds blew, they proved to be a big profit for those whose job it was to rebuild. In 1664, the Manchus stormed the palace and burned it to the ground, along with many rare books, paintings, and calligraphy. Most recently, in 1949, and on the eve of the communist takeover, thousands of crates and relics were taken to Taiwan and are on display in Taiwan's Taipei National Palace Museum. This is just one source of friction between China and Taiwan. The Forbidden City is so large, almost 167 acres, that it contains 800 buildings with 9,000 rooms. There's a permanent restoration team that moves around making repairs and painting wherever it's needed. It takes them about 10 years to do a complete renovation. The Forbidden City was open to the public in 1949. It receives about 10,000 visitors every day. There are many levels of ticket prices, so do your homework ahead of time. You enter from the south at the Tiananmen Gate, and you exit at the northern gate of divine military genius. Most of the side buildings are closed to visitors. Main archway, and the crush of humanity begins.
main opening here. Again, one of the things we noticed with uh, coming through the Forbidden City is that there are courtyards inside of courtyards. <laughs> and uh, one of the nice things, take a look on the other side, a basketball court <laughs> over here on our side. And there are lots of shops on the outside. Looking at the uh, huts, we'll talk about the, uh, the architecture uh, a little bit later. As we look further up the line, one courtyard into another courtyard. So we've gone through one, through the second, then into the third. And as soon as Bob turns around, you can see where we just came from, through the tunnel, through the other side, out to Tiananmen. To another inner courtyard and uh, again you can see a basketball court and uh, <laughs> from what I'm looking at the rooms are bent yes the rooms are bent so uh, good for them huh good for the Chinese uh, we're still heading further and further from one courtyard into another courtyard uh, and again when they talk about the Forbidden City being a place that just has lots and lots of rooms it's outstanding capitalism has found its way in the outer, outer areas of the Forbidden City. All kinds of vendors. Right there, Mongol, child, and mum. Tell by her rosy cheeks. The Meridian Gate was once reserved for the emperor. It is here that he viewed his armies, passed judgments on prisoners, and announced the new calendar each year. Gongs and bells would be sounded upon his royal comings and goings. The Forbidden City uh, finished finish, uh, its uh, 1420. 1420. 1420 is the last date of the construction of the Forbidden City. One million workers were employed in the building of this Forbidden City. From the 1420 to 1911. The two guides that we had with us on this trip, um, needless to say, were so invaluable uh, to us, uh, not but because of who they were or their interpretation, but because I happen to believe that uh, their presence and what they had done uh, really lifted everybody else up because, again, I come back to there is such a, a, a difficult language barrier that is here, and then to take it up a couple of notches about certain uh, words, certain vernacular that's being used scientifically was a tremendous challenge to both of these gentlemen, I, actually all the guides. We had uh, Mr. Jen who was our national guide who was absolutely tremendous and uh, the, 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 a lot of weight on his shoulders. And Mr. Liu in Beijing, he was a, a, t a terrific gentleman. But it was great to see them having fun with us and then us having a lot of fun with them from purely of the use of the vernacular. It was phenomenal. Meridian, Meridian Gate during the Qing and the Qing Dynasty. This name was used because during the Qing and the Dynasty, the Qing Dynasty was regarded as uh, central and worst. And the Meridian lines going right through it. So that is why uh, this gate was called Meridian, Meridian Gate. Well, we're going to, uh, from here, we're going to pick up our uh, self guide audio tour. And we've got about a half hour to find our way into somewhere in the middle. Uh, we will then shut off the audio guides and then we'll be taken to a place that is not uh, part of that audio tour. And again, you look up at some of those bricks and uh, they're well over 500 years old in terms of when it was built and went through 26 uh, emperors. And the movie The Last Emperor was in fact filmed here.
This is Forbidden City. It is truly an awesome spectacle to stand here and know the sense of history and tradition and the worksmanship and the craftsmanship. There isn't an eighth of an inch anywhere in these bricks between them. They are so well milled. It is so level. I look at the quality of the construction and what I'm looking at here. It's just astounding. I've never seen anything like it in my life. The uh, gate that I'm looking at is the gate of uh, Eternal Harmony, uh, which is the second doorway into the Forbidden City. And the center line that we see right through the center of this is where the emperors were carried all the way up uh, further and deeper and deeper into the... Third uh, gateway into the Forbidden City, and uh, just continue on walking. Again, it's uh, each of these uh, look somewhat the same, <laughs> but uh, I guess they're different. As we look across the vast courtyard in front of the Hall of Supreme Harmony, we are told that as many as 100,000 people could easily fit inside. This hall was the most important and largest structure within the Forbidden City. It was built in the 15th century and again restored in the 17th. It was used for the Emperor's birthday, nomination of military leaders, and coronations. To the west side of the terrace is a small pavilion with a bronze grain measure, and to the east is a sundial. Both are symbolic of imperial justice. Inside, the emperor would rule over nervous officials who were sure to please his every command. Temple of uh, Harmony and Peace. Uh, as I listen to my soundtrack here, apparently uh, all of the structures here are supported by wooden beams, and the image of the dragon is uh, underneath the ceiling as we get up close to it, we get a chance to see it. So let's head on up to the third of the temples, Harmony and Peace. Yeah. The, uh, the pillars that we see here, painted in red, were uh, laden with lacquer. Those are wooden, and uh, they were painted red in order to preserve them. So they look like stone, but they're not. They are, in fact, uh, wood. Temple of Harmony and Peace. And it looks like we're going indoors. Going up some wooden stairs here, pretty crickety. Actually, they're bamboo. They're bamboo. I hope we've sparked a little curiosity into the history of the Forbidden City. We suggest you seek out any of the fascinating books about this once mysterious residence. When we meet again, we'll take a look at some of the artifacts found inside the Forbidden City, as well as take a trip to the Summer Palace. And later that night, feast on Peking Duck, and the next day, visit the Beijing Zoo and meet everybody's favorite, the panda bears. We go into a couple of museums, uh, jewelry museum, and eventually over to Museum of Clocks and Watches. And we had to buy sandals. Uh, they're both two RMBs, uh, in English money, they're about 25 cents. So I'm about to put mine on, and Bob's going to be putting his on in a minute, especially with him carrying all that equipment. He ought to look real, real good. Aha. Uh -huh. All right, let's see how this works. <laughs> I guess it's going to slide right over my sneaker. Ooh, look at that, I did it. God, I'm really size 10s. They're very attractive, don't you think? Very attractive, don't you think? Yeah. Hey. <laughs> and the design on this is so that we do not upset the floors which are inside the museums. What do you think? You think this will cut it back at school? Those are sweet looking. Like Reeboks or? They're not Brockton colors. They're not Brockton colors, absolutely. I'm sure you can get them any color you want. Huh? All right, it's your turn to put yours on, and I can laugh at you. <laughs> it? I'm done? I'm done? Oh, jeez.
I only get three minutes? Jeez. I hate when I only get three minutes. I want more time. Don't you think I could have a little more time? Maybe a little more time. Not much, but a little more time. Oh, well.